The Beatles are synonymous with the swinging 60s, free love and hippie values. But what's often forgotten is that it wasn't until the end of the decade that the counterculture really kicked in. In 1967, Britain was still a largely quiet, conservative country. But as the idea of free love spread, teenagers began clashing with their disapproving parents. One teenager who did just that was Melanie Coe. She left home after a row with her parents and the story was reported in the Daily Mirror. Paul McCartney read the article and it would inspire him to write a poignant song that would become a classic. Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins. 43 years after she ran away at 17, we've brought Melanie back to her old family home. What's going through your head that day when you decided to leave? Why can't I just do what I want to do? I didn't think I was being unreasonable to be able to stay out a bit longer than four o'clock in the afternoon. But my mother said, no, you've got to go home now. So I did go home and I just stood in the flat thinking, they're going to be home soon and there's going to be another fight and screaming and shouting and throwing things around and I think I'll just leave. I literally threw the minimum amount of stuff in a bag and I went to that bus stop there and luckily there was a bus. Leaving the note that she hoped would say more. And I did leave a note, yes. But my father said something strange was happening. She'd never leave home because she had everything. Melanie ended up at a flat in Bayswater, central London. Meeting a man from the motor trade. Her boyfriend wasn't then a man from the motor trade, but amazingly, Paul's lyric was almost right. Well, he was a croupier, but previously, funnily enough, he'd actually worked in the car business. So he was a man from the motor trade, which is the lyric from the song. It's almost telepathic. <laughs> a few weeks after she left, Melanie's parents tracked her down. I had met them for tea, and that had gone very well. So I gave them this address, and they pulled up here and so I came out and I was whoosh, pulled actually by the hair I think into the back of the car took me against my will from my love nest Melanie's adventure was over two months later she's leaving home was released on the seminal Sgt Pepper album and Melanie heard it completely unaware that it was about her Standing alone at the top of the stairs. The hairs on my arms and stood up and I thought, oh, what a sad song. Oh, what a, you know, almost wanted to cry. In fact, I, I may have, but no, I hadn't connected it. A couple of years later, Melanie's mother heard an interview with Paul McCartney where he explained the inspiration for the song. She immediately rang Melanie. So I then listened to the words and looked at the words and thought, could it be? Well, yes. Suddenly, it, it, you know, it sort of hit me, but I just felt sad. I just, it's, even now, I, I find it very sad to listen to the song. But in a strange twist of fate, Melanie and McCartney had actually already met. Four years before storming out of home, Melanie had entered a miming competition on the hit TV show, Ready, Steady, Go. She won and Paul presented the prize. Oh, uh, who's it going to be? I think the winner, uh, as far as I'm concerned, number four. Number four, Melanie Coe. Paul McCartney came over and shook my hand and gave me a Beatles album, which was the greatest thing that could happen to any little teenage girl or boy at the time. As well as the excitement of meeting pop stars, in the late 60s, teenagers were learning how to get stroppy with their parents. She's Leaving Home captured exactly what was happening in homes up and down the country. I still love the song, even though it's nearly 50 years old. She's leaving home, bye, bye. Super stuff. I tell you, we've heard some great...